Welcome back to another LP Gallery tutorial. Today we're going to be creating blazing fiery text. And we're going to do this without the use of any photographs. The problem with using a fiery photograph and just sticking it into the background of the text is that it looks just like that. Technically, the flame should be wrapping around each letter individually. Something like this. So here we have our blazing fiery inferno text and you can see that every letter is wrapped in its own flame as it should be and we even have sparks going off the background we even have uh, fiery embers disappearing fading into the background so that is what we're going to be doing again we're creating blazing fiery text without the use of pictures Now, one of the great things about this technique is that you can use any font on your system. You don't need to go online and find a fiery looking font. Just about any font will work. So we have serif fonts, sans serif fonts, we have script fonts, we have character fonts. Just about any font will work. So we have things that are more sentence case with a capital. We have a full case here, all caps. And again, just about any font will work. So there's no real need to go online to look for a fiery looking font. Just about any font in your system is going to work as you can see here. Okay, so let's get started. To demonstrate that you can use just about any font in your system, we're gonna use plain Jane Arial Black. So that's not a very exciting font, but we'll be able to convert that into nice blazing fiery inferno text. So if you're using more of a character font, that'll probably work even better. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is change this to a word art. So we go to Shape Format, Text Effect, Transform, Warp, and we're going to go just to Square. Now it's important when you do this effect that the text is very large. Even if you want it to be this small, you still need to make it large because that will give you the best effect. And then when it's all done, you can copy and paste as a picture and then scale it back. So you do need to make this very large for the effect to work. Okay, so I'm going to stretch it out, something like that. It looks pretty good. And I think I'd like to italicize it. I think if the letters are at a slant, I think it'll work better. So I'm going to go to home and italics. It's going to have a more natural feel to the flames. Okay, now we do want the spacing between the letters like this. So you don't want to get the character spacing too close together. That's perfect. Okay, you do want the space between the letters. Okay, now for our color. You can use any color you like, but not black. So for color, I'm going to just use gray. And it doesn't really matter what color you choose because the first artistic effect we apply is going to change it to a gray scale anyways. So I would just stick to gray. The important thing is the outline. So we're going to click on solid outline and it has to be black. Okay, that's important. It has to be black and it has to be a thicker outline. So I'm going to spin this up and maybe about six. Now, how thick you make this is going to depend on the font you chose. Obviously, a thinner font, you're not going to be able to put as thick outline. But the things you're looking for is to make sure that when you have a thick outline, that they don't touch. So the letters aren't touching each other. A little bit here, but that's not too bad. But we don't want all the letters touching each other. And more importantly, the hollow parts of the letters, the opening in the letters, like the G, the A, and the B, we don't want those filled. It's very important that they're not filled, or it's going to make it really hard to read the text okay so that's kind of how we judge how thick to make the outline okay you don't want the letters touching because of a thick outline and you want to make sure that the hollow parts of the letters are clearly visible okay that looks pretty good we're going to apply two different artistic techniques to this the first one is designed to rough up the outline okay and the second one is designed to smooth out that rough outline so the first thing we want to do is rough out the outline so we don't have all these straight edges okay to do that we're going to copy Paste as a picture. You'll notice we have a black rectangle. That's very important. This blazing fiery effect needs to be done on a black background. Now, it's the same as if you went online to find a nice fiery picture to put into your text. Well, you're going to find those fiery pictures are always on a black background because that really makes the fire stand out. Now, in our case, with the techniques we're using, they really need to be on a black background, and you'll see why as we build this. Okay, so we're going to apply the first artistic effects. We're going to go here. And we're going to choose this one here called Chalk Sketch. Now, what Chalk Sketch does is give you this nice gray-white pattern, okay? If you'll notice, it's actually at a diagonal, same as our text. So that works out pretty good. Okay, now we need that pattern. Now, Chalk Sketch effect is kind of funny sometimes. Sometimes you don't get this pattern. 
Now, if that happens, all you got to do is change your fill color to the text to white. And if you copy and paste and apply the chalk sketch pattern, then you'll get this pattern. Okay. So it happens occasionally. Okay. Now I really want the outline to be a little more rough. So I'm going to copy paste as a picture. Okay. Get rid of that one and apply it again. Okay. Now we're not doing anything with the pressure. Leave the pressure at zero. Don't touch the pressure. Just leave it the way it is. Okay. Now you can see on the light gray background, that's not impressive, but on the black background, it's more impressive. So you can see how our outline is getting a little more rough. So I'm going to do this one more time. So I'm going to copy paste as a picture, get rid of the other one. Okay. And apply it one more time. Okay. Now that looks pretty good. So now we have a pretty rough jagged outline. I kind of like that. Now, how many times you apply this effect will depend on the font again. If you're using a thinner font, you're probably not going to apply it as many times. But what I have here is what you're kind of going for, okay? Now, if you keep applying this chalk sketch effect, you're going to lose the black edges, and we need those black edges. So here I've done it three times, and that's perfect. Okay, so now we've got a rough outline. Now we have to smooth that outline. Okay, to do that, we're going to copy, paste as a picture, get rid of this one, and apply the next one. And that's going to smooth out the outline. To do that, we're going to go here and we're going to choose one called Glow Edges. Now, what Glow Edges does is reverse things. So, what's white will go black, what's black will go white. So, I'm going to click on that and we get this. Okay. Now, obviously, our edges here are really kind of jagged. We don't want that. We want smooth. So, here's where we go to the smoothness. So, we're going to take the smoothness all the way to the right. We have 10. So, now we have a free flowing, undulating, rolling kind of outline that's more conducive to our nice fiery text okay now if you compare that to this you can see it's very different okay so now we got our outline the next step is to create our nice filaments that really look like the flames wrapping around the letters so to do that we're going to copy paste as a picture to add those filaments we're going to go here to what's called plastic wrap so we click that and we get some plastic wrap there. We take this smoothest all the way over to the right. So 10, it looks good. We're going to copy paste again. We want more filaments. So we're going to apply that again. Drag it all the way over. Okay, you can see what's happening there. Let's do it one more time. Get rid of that one. And drag it over. And now you can see we got these nice flaming filaments. And I might try it one more time just to see what it looks like. Okay, so let's try one more time and drag it over. And I think it looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Now, one of the problems with using plastic wrap is that it tends to focus more in the middle rather than the edges. So if we keep applying the plastic wrap over and over again to get all the letters, especially the ones at the ends, then all you get is this big blazing white and it's hard to tell what's going on. So generally you're letters to the edge here like the b and the g probably aren't going to have as much of the filament as the middle ones and that's okay okay now the only downside is you'll probably notice that we have some dark areas that we're gonna to have to fix here okay so we're not gonna do that right now now we're gonna add our nice fiery color to do that we're gonna to go to picture format we're going to color we're gonna do full color saturation and full color tone and then we're going to go to corrections and i'm going to go down to this one in the middle in the bottom brightness zero normal plus 40. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to take it up and you see we have these edges here. So we got to get rid of these edges. And the reason is we're going to be throwing those nice fiery embers and they're going to be in the background. Now, if we obviously have a black edge, then they're going to go up to the black edge and that's going to be pretty noticeable. So to get rid of the black edges, we're going to go to our soft edges right here and we're going to spin it up just a teeny bit. And that just works on the edges kind of like that. Okay, no more than that. That's perfect. If you go too much like that, then you get softness all around, which is no good. Okay. So in my case, I think uh, maybe three. So you do want to get rid of those edges, but you don't want to soften up too much. Okay. Now I think it looks pretty good. Let's take a look at it in the slideshow. And I think you got some fiery text happening there. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is add a little more darkness to this. So I think if we add some darker colors to this. It's going to kind of give it a little more depth. Now to do that, we're going to duplicate this. I'm going to hold my control and drag. Okay. And I'm going to select both of them. We're going to align them. We're going to align center and we're going to align middle and we have to deselect and then click on just the top one. Now I'm going to go back to my corrections and I'm going to choose this one right here. 
brightness minus 20, contrast plus 40. Okay, so it makes it very dark. I'm going to spin that up. Okay, and just we have some dark spots. Now, I'll just show you what we're doing. So by spinning it up, you can see we get the dark spots there. Okay, now I'm going to just make a comparison so you can see the difference. So I'm going to drag this one down and I'm going to click on the dark one on top, get rid of it. And let's take a look. So you can see this is blazing yellow and this one has the dark areas. And I think you can see that a little bit of the darkness adds a little more depth to the fire. Okay, it looks pretty good to me. Okay, now you may like this one just being yellow like that. That's up to you. Okay, now I'm going to select both of these and I'm going to copy and paste as a picture. Now what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to make it more red. So it should be more fiery red. So do that. We're going to go to picture format. We're going to go to color. Again, full color saturation, full color tone. Okay, now let's take a look at that. And now we got this blazing red fire. Okay, so obviously it's a little brighter than this one here. Okay, let's get rid of this one. So the fiery text is done. So the next thing to do is to create our nice fiery embers. Now we're going to use the same text for that, but it requires a much thicker outline. So if you're not familiar with how PowerPoint handles outlines, I'm going to demonstrate that for you. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to go to my text options and I don't need a fill. So I'm going to remove the fill and I'm going to change the outline to red and I'm going to make that one just one point just like that okay and then we're going to select them and I'm going to align them up so the red outline represents the actual edge of the text so you can see the one behind it that has a thicker black outline you see that half the line goes into the text half the line goes outside the text so I'm going to demonstrate that so you can really understand how thick lines are handled by PowerPoint so right now I've got the text, the thick outline selected. You can tell that right here, it's six point and it's black. Okay. Now what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to increase the thickness of the outline. So again, it's the text in the back with the thick outline already. So I'm going to make it much thicker and you can watch how that works. So I'm going to spin it up. Now, as I spin it up, you can clearly see that half the outline is going into the text, half goes to the outside. The red represents the edge of the text, okay? And that's what we're doing. So we need a really thick outline. Now, what goes inside the text doesn't matter. You're not going to see it because this text is going to be above it. What we're concerned with is the outside of the text. So the thicker the outline, the better this effect's going to be. So I'm going to keep spinning it up. Maybe about 22, okay? So we have a nice thick outline. So that's where our nice sparking uh, fiery embers are going to be. So right there. Okay, let me get rid of this red outline. Don't need it. Okay, now we don't want any gray, so I'm going to go to my text options. I'm going to make that a black fill. Okay, so it's totally black. So again, we don't have to worry about the opening in the letters here because this is going to be sitting on top of that. So we don't have to worry about anything like that. Okay, so we're going to create our last artistic effect. So we're going to take this text with a nice thick outline. We're going to copy paste as a picture. And we're going to apply our last effect. So we're going to go to our effects, artistic effects. We're using a third one from the top called pencil grayscale. Okay, and it gives us that. It gives us nice slanted lines. So you can see that uh, with the italics, everything is going in a slant. So even this pattern is going in a slant. Okay, now that's too big of a pattern. We want the smaller pattern. So I'm going to go to my pencil size, take it all the way to the left like that. So it's at zero. Okay, so we still get our slanted pattern, but it's a much smaller one. Now I'm going to copy that and paste it as a new image and do it one more time just so we have more of that pattern. So delete that and go back here, pencil grayscale, and drag it all the way over, okay? And that looks better. Now we're gonna apply the same color as we did to the fire text here. So we go to picture format, we go full color saturation, full color tone, and we're gonna use the same correction right here in the middle, and that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna bring the fiery text to the front, so right click, bring to front, and this is gonna go behind it, okay? You're gonna look at this and you're gonna say, that doesn't look very good. Well, we still have to do one more thing. We have to go to our corrections and to sharpen and soften, we're gonna apply a 25% soften, okay? Now, when we do that, you can see better the idea of the sparking fiery embers. 
Now, the problem, of course, is that they're too sharply defined here. We have a hard edge. We don't want any hard edge. So we go to our soft edges, and we spin up, and that softens it. Okay, now, this pencil grayscale, I'm going to show you what's great about this, especially for the effect that we have here. So right now, we got sparking embers, but we can also have flames. So watch what happens when I move the pencil size to the right. So as I start moving it, things become bigger. So now we have actual flames. Now, if I keep going, the flames get bigger and bigger and bigger. So we can go from small sparking embers to large flames. So that looks pretty good. Now, in this case, I want more of the small embers. So I'm going to drag it back to the left. And I wouldn't mind a couple, a little bit of the flames in there. So maybe something like that. Okay, so we have some sparking embers, some flames. Now, let's take a look at that in the slideshow. And I think it looks pretty good. And again, you can move the pencil size whichever way. So you can have smaller embers, bigger flames, up to you. Okay, now what I'm going to do is create another one. I want sparking embers that are fading into the background. To do that, we just have to duplicate this sparking embers. We just take that. I'm going to hold my control and drag it. And it looks pretty good. Now we're going to go to our picture format. We're going to go to our corrections. And what I'm going to do is soften that even more. So 50%. And I think I'm going to darken it. So I'm going to move one over to the left here. Brightness minus 20, contrast plus 40. That looks pretty good. Okay, now this has to go behind everything. So I'm going to select these. And I'm going to tell them to come to the front. That's good. And this is going to go up here. Now I'm going to just take all this down a bit so you can see it better. Good. So if you take a look at this, you can see we have sparking embers. Okay, it looks pretty good. They're fading in the background. Now again, I can take this and make them look bigger. Or I can take it to the left, make them look smaller. Okay, like that. So they're sparking like that. So let's take a look at that. So we have these embers just sparking off the flames. It looks pretty good. And we can make it also bigger. So I can drag it this way. And do something like that. And let's take a look at that. And we have more of the flames that are fading into the background. Okay, so you can go either way. It's up to you. I think I'll just take it back a bit. Okay, now we can stretch this out even more, so they jump even higher, and we can take the soft edges up, like this. Okay, so again, sparking embers, sparking flames, and we can go left, right, make them bigger, make them smaller, whatever you like. Okay, I think that looks pretty good, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so there it is. We have our nice flaming text. You can see that it's very fiery. Every letter is engulfed in flames. We have some nice fiery embers and some flames that are just dancing off the edges of the text. And we have some dying embers in the background fading away. So that looks pretty good. Now, what about making it smaller? Let's say if you actually wanted a smaller size. Let's see how to do that. So my recommendation is to select the whole thing, copy it, paste it as a picture. Okay. Now, if I put on the light areas, you can see all that black. So now you understand why we have to do this on a black background. Okay, now I'm going to hold my shift and just make it smaller. So if you need it to be smaller, there it is. Okay, let's take a look at that in the slideshow. And if we do comparison, they both look pretty good. Okay, so again, I'd recommend you make it much larger than you need. And then when it's all done, copy, paste it as a picture and just reduce it. There it is. This is how you create nice, fiery, blazing text without the use of pictures. Okay, and you can see that the flames are wrapping around each individual letter as they should be. We have our nice flames in the background. We have some dying embers that are fading away in the background. So it looks fairly realistic. Okay, so again, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. We always appreciate those. If you have any comments, leave those. We appreciate those too. And if there's something you didn't quite catch, just leave a comment. We'll get back to you. So once again, thank you for watching and we hope to catch you on the next video.